is the customized menu here up uh, at the top. Jerry, I thought we might just kind of run through a few of these things and then uh, we'll, we'll kind of just navigate through the, the world of customization as it exists in this build, which as you already noted, is, is just a subset of what we can expect to find in the, in the shipping game. So I think we'll just go down the list here. People yeah. are probably very eager, I assume. They've never seen this, by the way. I do like this idle animation. You let it sit and it just kind of cycles through some really cool um, sort of 3D assets. Yeah. Which which is yeah, just, the, the, it's cool, nice. the other cool thing is like you just pop in a customization. You already know we're doing a, a, a lot more. And, you know, it's great to hear Sam and you notice some of the customization that's going on with bots um, and in your own hands with, well, uh, you know, with your uh, AR. Uh, that's all that's all in the game uh, for for people to play with. All right. Well, let's start by going in the armor hall and then yeah. we're just going to kind of quickly move through here and then we'll, you know, we'll kind of bounce around like you and I discussed. So armor hall, pretty self-explanatory. This is where I'm going to customize my Spartan's armor, right? So yeah. um, right away, here we go. Um, now for this tech preview, because it's a subset, I'm going to have one armor core and that's going to be my Mark seven armor core. And, you know, Jerry, you and I have discussed this a little bit. Just there's been a lot of questions, I think, in the community since we first started talking about armor cores, right? And, and we've, we've, demonstrated this and sort of showed it off in our old overview video and some prior blogs. So how would you sort of best describe like what is an armor core and sort of how should we think about that? Yeah, so this is one of our new our new systems. So Christopher Blum and uh, Jeremy have done a really great job here uh, creating this system. You know, one of the things when we stepped back in design, we wanted to wanted to rethink how do we help make sure that our players uh, are really represented as characters. And when you take a look at Spartan armor, it's like strapping on an F-22. Or maybe you want a set of armor that is like an M1 Abrams tank, right? Each one of those vehicles is unique and has a unique character. Um, the other great thing about that, the, the, the thing we're trying to build is we're trying to make sure that the character of that armor really comes through. Uh, th there's really no better way to show this than, um, hey, Josh, you have uh, one of the pictures, one of the concept pictures? Yeah. Okay. So everyone saw at the end of that amazing multiplayer trailer, the, the samurai armor. When we talk about strapping on a piece of armor as a unique character, I think, I think our first fracture core, and that's, we call these fractures because they're, they're not part of the main canon. They're part of basically side universes uh, that, you can, that you can look at. You can look at how we're trying to develop the character, and our artists have done an amazing job of really trying to represent the breadth of what we want to look at maintaining the character uh, throughout the entire armor set, and more importantly, allowing that customization and you as a player saying, hey, look, when I strap on that, Sarmer, you know, that samurai uh, armor tank, I want to make sure that I can make it mine. And this is the breadth in which we can, we can really express but stay within the character. We don't want everyone to feel like they're just all one part of a single uh, a, a single vehicle, basically. And so then you can look at what 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 the artists have been able to think about, and you take a look at the attachments that you're seeing there. You're seeing swords. You're seeing, you know, a bandolier. You're seeing grenades. You're seeing different hip pieces. You're seeing daggers. You're seeing darts. You're seeing whole different expression of what. A samurai could look at could look like, um, and that's that's pretty critical for us to help at least in this first impression and our first moment for everyone at launch. Um, because remember, at a live game perspective, we are expecting everyone to provide feedback: what works, what doesn't work, what do you want to see more, and that's where the grant game will grow as we move forward. Yeah, this is you awesome. Back, by the Judge. way, I'm super excited by the uh, your Roy samurai in particular, which which by the way we've also confirmed will be. Um, one of the first free pieces of content that players can earn in season one by just completing a, a free event. Which yeah, is cool. absolutely. And, and again, that, that type of completion where just playing the game and earning things is still a part of not only our DNA, but again, from a free-to-play game, we want to make sure that we provide multiple avenues, not just the battle pass, but you have different ways, and we'll show that um, as, as we go forward, different ways in which you can earn things. Yeah, right now I'm just kind of cycling through the weapon bench just to give, yeah. uh, you know, give our viewers a sense of what that looks like. So, you know, if I were to equip uh, weapon coatings, I could check them out here. Um, I'm just sort of scrolling through, giving people a chance to see some of the some of the weapons that they uh, we have in the game currently that they'll be able to check out. So, I yeah, really love th this feature. This is so sweet because every time you pick up a weapon, right, you take it off the weapon pad. It is your weapon, and it'll be skinned the way you want it to. It, it, it'll it'll look the way you want it to. It is, it is just a sweet, sweet 
um, feeling. Let's quickly jump into vehicle bay. I mean, one quick caveat here is none of the experiences in this tech preview build will let you uh, drive vehicles this time around. But of course, vehicles are an integral part of our sandbox, huge part of the experience, especially with the return of Big Team Battle. Yeah. So we're going to get to that a little bit later this year. Um, but I'll just kind of give people a quick glimpse here um, of some of the updated models, some of these things we're seeing for the first time, I believe. Yeah, um, and again, for the what, what we're showing here from a customization perspective, you make this you. So you you get to say, hey, look, no, when I drive my Warthog or when I get on my Razorback with my team, I'm the driver, I get into it first, it's gonna look the way that, that, that I want it to look like. And so as you continue to play in, your, in the community, you're gonna have different looks from, from players and everyone will know, like, it is you in the driver's seat. All right, then I'm going to jump down one more real quick here in the body and AI. Um, this one, you know, we we obviously have a couple different body types I can choose choose from. I, I'm really I really love actually the the depth that we've been able to go to now for prosthetics, right? Yeah. Just an additional layer of customization and frankly inclusivity as well. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, the biggest thing is just about you know from a philosophy perspective for for player first is we want everyone to be able to represent themselves. Um, you know, my sister actually does build prosthetics for a living. Um, and this is very important is it's a part of your identity. Um, it's also, quite frankly, some of it's really cool. Um, and again, we're only showing a very small subset, so don't get lost in that. Um, but the sheer fact that you can do your, your entire body the way you want to from a prosthetic perspective and really make this your identity is really, really critical for us. So personal AI is another new addition to the game. We introduced this. Uh, people heard uh, some personal AI in the MP trailer, for example. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people out there that became instant fans of Lumu, for example. Um, and I think, you know, we'll talk more about this probably with Tom French in a bit, and we'll see it in action in some of our additional footage. But, you know, this is just a subset, right? So yeah. there's and it's also just the beginning. Like this is the this is the biggest thing. We have so many things in which you can really express yourself um, you know, the way you want to. And even your your AI sidekick, it's yours to express. Like, it's yours to make yours. And I think it, the cool thing is that when you see when you see Tom talk about it and you see the modes you're going to use it in, um, it really becomes a part of the personality that you bring to the field. Yeah, and, you know, each each AI here, for example, has their own unique voice, their own unique personality. Yep. It's, it's really fun. And then you can go one step further if you want to and actually yep. even you know, a subset of colors as well. So yeah. personal AI is one of my favorite additions to the game currently, yeah. and I can't wait for, for players to experience more of that. Um, and then, you know, we have one more grayed out area here, and this is where I'd be able to do stuff like my service tag and emblem. And, you know, I think you've alluded to, there's more coming there's than more what's coming. in this build, so we want yeah. people to stay tuned. Um, now I think, you know, let's quickly, I want to keep things moving here because I sure. know folks are eager. we got a lot to get through. Um, how about we, you want to jump over to the Battle Pass? Yeah, let's do um, that. Maybe we'll switch, Josh, why don't we jump over to Jerry? He'll, he'll drive us through. And let's just talk a little bit about, um, you know, what we're designating the Season Zero Battle Pass um, and, and sort of what that's going to be for players in this technical preview. Yeah, so when, you, when we take a look at ourselves learning as a team, the reason why we want to do Season Zero is, like the rest of our live experience, our team needs to build the muscle of, of listening to the players, of pro providing fixes, really going through even veteran uh, people who've worked on, on games, game developers. Uh, when they go through a service, every game is different, every team is different, and it takes a, a lot of muscle building to really get into the rhythm for your teams to be able to add to the game. And so what we hope to hear from on the technical preview side is, again, what, what's working for you? What's not working for you? What don't you like? Remember, the build is old, so don't don't treat it as if it's vinyl at all. Um, so as we go, on, go into these details, um, just just remember, just send us, send us your feedback. Give us the details that you want to see or improve on. Um, and we won't, again, because we're a few months from launch, we won't necessarily be able to fix everything for launch, but we'll start adding lists together. First thing I want to talk about from a battle pass perspective is is our challenges. Our challenge system um, is the cornerstone. It is the underlying thing in which we go. Now everyone's familiar with these. We've done a little bit different. This is where you start seeing the first rewards that you get outside of the pass. So we know, right? Games are a bit different today than they were uh, back in the day. In fact, back in the day, most people only had two to three games a year that they even looked at. Today, I bet you most of your Steam libraries are much larger than that. 
And that means players are going from Sea of Thieves or they're jumping over to Age of Empires and then they're coming into Halo as well. And we want to make sure that when you sit down, you don't have to absorb an entire battle pass to say, what are my rewards? You can literally just come in. What are the challenges? I'm going to go play my games with my friends and I'm going to get rewarded for it. That's pretty critical for us from a player first perspective. And then, of course, you're going to get people like me. I'm going to get sometimes get sniper challenges. Now, I'm not clutch in any way, shape, or form, or Mikwin or any other pro team. <laughs> I will skip the the that challenge. So I'll definitely probably swap that for sure. Um, and I'll, I'll want to make sure that uh, I don't have to do that because I'm not good at it at all. So let's look at the battle pass. So we're going to buy this? Is that what we're going to do? Yeah, we granted you. You're just like a, a real tech preview participant. Right, so this... We have given you some money, Jerry. All right, good. I get paid today. Sweet. All right. Sweet. Got the pass. We're ready to go. So, as you can see, oh, I bought it, so now you can't see the free labels. Shoot. Oh, oh well. Yeah, well, you're right. What, 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 what we're not seeing is a smattering of objects in this pass are free, right? So, Correct. even if someone doesn't want to opt into the optional pass in the real game, there will still be a free track and things to earn along yeah, the way. The main thing you think of from, from a model that we have is every tier there's a free item and a premium item and that means that every single player instead of having uh you know most systems you have large swaths of of the tiers that aren't earned unless you're premium for us we want you to earn every step of the way um, and for the preview um we're only having 30 level or 20 levels sorry 20 levels in the preview uh to be able to uh, go after and so uh, obviously at launch we'll have much larger we're not going to talk about that too much but the great thing you're seeing here is you're seeing customization all along the way um, do you want to go to yours yeah we can we'll, yeah want, Josh you want to jump back over to mine because um, I had some development cheats enabled so I've got everything already unlocked um, oh, actually Josh switch back over to my feed there there we go so now that we have that context, Jerry, of yeah. kind of sort of where this content's going to come from, I'm back in the armor hall. I've just kind of drilled now into this. This is what happens if I click in on my core, right? So yeah. this is, we don't need to go through all this. I, want, I know folks are probably eager to see some more gameplay. We want to talk about bots and arena as well. But, you know, this is where I would apply my coatings, for example. Some yeah. of these coatings I'm going to earn. We saw the keystone coating as a challenge reward, for example. Um, so this is just a taste of kind of what I'll be able to do. Um, I can't wait to see how players in the tech preview, I, you know, I would hope a lot of people are probably going to easily hit tier 20 and max out. Yeah. Um, you know, if not, that's our hope. What are you doing? You've had this long to prepare. Like, come on, you, you've waited for this. <laughs> it we should need just you. be good. Go crazy. But yes, this is just to give you an idea. As I lock, unlock my content for the core, this is where I'm going to go in and be able to be able to customize that. Yeah. And I mentioned this to you the other day, but funny fact, someone pointed out to me that if you want to, I think for the first time in a Halo game, you can have no shoulder pads. Which Correct. You know, hey, if that's your if that's your fancy, go for it. So lots of different options here, and uh, yeah, and this is like you're not seeing things in here like armor effects or uh, other categories that we have uh, listed here. Uh, for the tech preview, it's really small, um, and so we tried to keep it basically the baseline pieces. Um, actually, let's talk about armor kit for a little bit. That's yeah, yeah. What is yeah? Because this, I don't think this is really. So, fully supported in this build, though. Yeah, so when we talk about, um, specifically from a pillar perspective, of continuing the story, the armor kit kind of represents a bunch of that story. And so when you see the season, and when we say story, uh, we mean the continuing story of the universe fr from after you, uh, when you're in campaign as Master Chief, what are the rest of the Spartans doing? You are a Spartan, and so your story belongs here, too. But it's also a place in which you can show iconic uh, characters within the Halo universe. And so a kit, for example, you might get, um, I don't know, George or Emil, and that is an entire kit unto itself. And so you want to, like, you actually want to go fly the, you know, do your battles on the battlefield like George, that's where you would go uh, to get that kit. Well, Jerry... This is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. I think there's still a ton of fun content in here for insiders this weekend to experiment with, unlock, explore. 